I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for the latest in RV and camping news. One of the biggest stories this week is that Forest Rivers, Ibex, and No Boundaries divisions are consolidating plants, resulting in some layoffs in Elkhart, Indiana. Nobo and Ibex are sister brands, very similar with identical production methods and engineering, but with a few exclusive floor plans to each. There are several other pairs of brands like this. It's kind of an old school thing that allows different dealers in the same market to have exclusivity over a line while manufacturers keep resources streamlined. It's a bit silly in this day and age to me when we're all looking at these things on the internet, but it exists nonetheless. No Boundaries and Ibex are adventure travel trailers with some rugged off-road features. You might know that an Ibex 20 BHS is what we took from Baja to Alaska over the course of last year. Full disclosure, we're brand ambassadors for Forest River, and it's important that I say here that I'm not speaking for Forest River here, but as an independent reporter, which they are happy to let me do. The current No Boundaries plant is shutting down, and 83 employees will be losing their jobs, according to an official WARN notice filed with the state of Indiana. Both Ibex and No Boundaries trailers will be manufactured together in the current Ibex plant, which is much newer, having opened in the last few years. The No Boundaries plant will become an enhanced parts and service center to help improve customer service. Even with the major downturn in RV production since the pandemic boom ended, this is the first warn notice from an Indiana RV manufacturer since 2022. Warn notices are required to be given to employers and the state 60 days in advance of most plant closings and mass layoffs. In total, Forest River has over 11,000 employees. Some other news out of Forest River's motorized wing, Volta Power Systems will be providing several motor home lines with a beefy lithium power system, enough to run an air conditioner and ditch the generator. Volta is a highly respected company and their system will be an option on Mercedes platforms sold under Forest River, including the Sunseeker, Forester, and Solera brands with 13,500 watt hours or over 1,100 amp hours of usable energy. Volta says owners will be able to run high power amenities, including all night air conditioning. Three prototypes have been built and units will go into production in March. Each also features a 7,000 watt alternator to charge batteries while driving. A typical car alternator only makes about 1,400 watts. The system also includes a 3,200 watt inverter. Forest River intends to eventually offer the system on other chassis, including the Ram ProMaster. Dragonfly Energy, makers of Battleborn batteries, has announced a partnership with Forest River's new OGV luxury coach division. Battleborn lithium batteries are standard equipment on all OGV units, which debuted at the Florida RV Super Show in January. Dragonfly is supplying a system similar to Volta's with 1,080 amp hours of Battleborn Game Changer 3.0 batteries. It's really nice to see such ample power systems coming from the factory so you don't have to rip everything apart and they're not being built with cut rate generic brand components. I've just returned from the Seattle RV show, my third RV show of the year. Show season is well underway and lots of reporting I'm seeing as well as my own conversations with manufacturer reps and dealers tells me that sales are mixed, but generally better than expected. Part of that may have something to do with the fact that interest rates for RV loans have been cut by retail lenders, even though the Fed has yet to cut rates overall. That's according to an article from the RV Dealers Association, which also says that many RV shows are suspending their rules and allowing 2023 units to be sold, which I certainly noticed in Seattle with many units advertised as the last 2023 available at that dealership. Dealers have noted that many of the buyers that are out there at the moment are value buyers and getting a deal on a 2023 and newly lowered payments thanks to a slightly lower interest rate may be helping RV show sales even with attendance staying flat or dropping a bit. Mark Wahlberg Airstream. Yes, it's an Airstream dealer owned by actor Mark Wahlberg in Columbus, Ohio, has launched what it calls the first virtual universe digital connected Airstream dealership. It's a fully digital dealership at markwalbergvu.com where you can find a virtual reality Airstream showroom 
with 360 degree views and in-depth tours. None of that's too exciting, but once you've found your perfect Airstream, the buying process actually happens right in the website and a secure file cabinet stores all of your essential Airstream documents, including warranties and titles, how-to videos, things that can be accessed from anywhere. Wahlberg owns several RV and auto dealerships, mostly in Ohio. Ford is recalling over 16,000 2021 and 2022 E350 and E450 vehicles equipped with dual rear wheels. These are cutaway chassis, many of which are used in Class C motorhomes. An inadequate connection between the power steering pressure line and the brake hydro boost unit may result in a sudden loss of power steering fluid. Dealers will replace the power steering pressure line and the hydro boost jumper line free of charge. Vehicles in this recall were previously recalled back in 2022 for the exact same issue, but apparently the fix was not effective and owners will need to have the new remedy completed even if their vehicle was remedied under the prior recall. Owner notification letters are expected to be mailed on March 25th. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by our friends over at Matt's RV Reviews. Their liquefied RV toilet tank treatment is a real toilet tank treatment created by a YouTube influencer, but actually it's really darn good. Matt tested all sorts of RV tank treatments and he found that he didn't like any of them. So he actually went to a chemical manufacturer and worked up a product with them, including a really nice to use dispensing system. And if you don't like the liquid type, you don't want to dispense it out of a bottle, they have drop-in tablets as well. Liquefied RV toilet tank treatment has become very popular in its short time on the market, and you can find it over at liquefiedrv.com. Thanks so much to Liquefied RV for supporting the show and to you for supporting our sponsors. New York State Parks, Historic Sites, Campgrounds, and Trails saw a record 84.1 million visits in 2023, according to a release Total visits statewide surged by nearly 4.7 million, a 6% increase compared to the previous record year in 2022, leading into the park system's 100th anniversary, which happens this year. Last year marked the 11th consecutive annual increase in New York State Park attendance, and the 4.7 million jump in visits was the highest annual increase on record. Over the last two decades, state park attendance has climbed steadily, increasing nearly 60% in New York, and of course it's increasing all across the country. The governor's fiscal year 2025 executive budget proposes $300 million in capital funding to invest in New York State park improvements, which includes $100 million just for the celebration of the New York State Park's centennial. Meanwhile, in Michigan, Governor Gretchen Whitmer's annual budget proposal would have drivers renewing their plates automatically opted in to purchase a state recreation passport. It's a symbol on a license plate that allows vehicle entry into state parks, campgrounds, and trails for one year after its purchase. Currently, the passport is available for $14 when you order or renew your vehicle license plate. Officials have proposed automatically including the charge in Michigan residents' plate renewals, a change that the state estimates will bring in $17 million annually. Drivers would still be able to opt out of purchasing the service, but would need to intentionally make the decision to do so by sending in a postcard that is pre-addressed and postage paid. Michigan's veterans will be granted a passport free of charge. Michigan has over 100 state parks, 1,300 boating launch sites, and 13,500 miles of trails, many of which have seen increased attendance and decreased state general fund dollars over the years. Back in 1970, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources received 68% of its funding from the state's general fund, and now that figure is only 3%. Currently, around 38% of drivers opt in to purchase a recreation passport. Under the new system, the state believes that 60% will be purchasing the pass, while the other 40% will be mailing that postcard in to opt out. Nation's largest campground chain, KOA, has announced a partnership with Grit Freedom Chair, Place Grit's all-terrain wheelchairs at select properties. KOA's Outdoor Accessibility Report recently revealed that 38% of today's campers have some sort of physical disability, pointing to the need for enhanced accessibility in outdoor environments. The Grit Freedom Chair, designed by engineers from MIT, 
is a mix between a traditional wheelchair and a mountain bike, allowing users unpaved access to the outdoors, whether on trails, boardwalks, or sandy beaches. KOA is launching a beta test of the Freedom Chair at the Terramore Resort property for the 2024 season. The chair will be part of the resort's complimentary gear lending program, allowing guests with mobility restraints free use. KOA's latest monthly research report shows a significant uptick in travel bookings for the 2024 season, particularly among Gen Z campers. KOA says travel demand has surged significantly beyond last year's figures, with 64% of campers already making reservations for upcoming trips. This proactive booking behavior starkly contrasts with non-camping leisure travelers, of whom 29% have made similar arrangements. Gen Z campers and individuals who began camping during the COVID-19 pandemic led the early booking trend. Finally, an update on fuel prices. The average cost of a gallon of regular gasoline has risen about 20 cents in the last month to $3.27 a gallon, while diesel has risen 17 cents to 409. After months of barely budging more than a few cents either direction, the national averages for pump prices have bolted up fairly quickly, according to AAA. A significant factor is a shutdown at a large BP refinery in Indiana, which has been offline for more than two weeks due to a power outage and fire. It's the sixth largest refinery in the U.S., processing 435,000 barrels of crude per day. Pump prices usually move higher this time of year, but this is more than usual. Gas prices are still down 14 cents from a year ago, while diesel prices are down 40 cents per gallon year over year. That's it for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. We're going to have a truck news roundup over the weekend that I hope you'll check out. But thanks for being here, everybody. Hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you want more like this. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.